section 5.4 in the rules, this is pack definition and in play, out of play. So I'll read you some of the rules and we'll kind of game it out here. So the blockers of both teams skate predominantly forward in the direction of play in a group, maintaining proximity to each other on the track in order to maintain a pack. All skaters in the pack are in play. So what is proximity? Does anyone know? 10 feet. 10 feet. So who can point out 10 feet on the track really easily? Yeah, from the, from the one edge of the starting boxes to the other, that's 10 feet. So if there was nobody else here, we would be and, and we would be in play together, right? Okay. So let me clarify that though. Proximity is defined as an inbounds and upright position within 10 feet of another blocker who is in play, okay? So if Bridget's over here, actually that example is Bridget's the jammer. Get out of here. Come <laughs> out of here. Imagine, yeah, go step out of bounds. Imagine everybody else has disappeared. We are not creating a proximity situation together because she's out of bounds. What if you come back on the track and you fall on your face? Take it easy. Not, in, not upright and in play, okay? So access is upright and inbounds, and we are within 10 feet of each other, so between the two of us, we have achieved proximity. Yay! Pardon me? At least two players just um, Any player who's within 10 feet of another blocker who's in play is part of the pack. So it could be one, one player against. If, if everybody, had to tie their shoelace and there was just two of us left, we would be the pack. Okay. Pack of two. Okay. Um, and that includes your own teammates, which is very different from flat track. Okay? Blockers of any description. Okay. This is an important distinction. A jammer who is inbounds and upright anywhere on the track, regardless of proximity is considered in play, but a jammer can, is never considered to be part of the pack. Okay, so what that means is that if my two jammers are on their breakaway, so speed ahead and throw a little back here behind on the track, doing whatever, pause right there, are they part of the pack? No. Are they in play? Yeah. Can Laura smash the shit out of this other jammer? direction of gameplay to do that. One thing you want to be careful of though is uh, go back to where you were. If you're skating back to rejoin the pack, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally come on back. You don't uh, make contact with an opposing blocker while you are coming this way because that's the stinky block. You get the direction of play foul. Question? Yeah, so does that have to be a complete stop or can you just slow down? 
It has to be like an obvious move to regain the pack. So if there's light forward movement, that's probably not going to be, you know, if you're making an obvious, like, you change your speed dramatically to let the pack catch up to you. Yeah. Right. So while you're up there, you can't be messing with the camera, etc. Okay, so other examples. Um, what if... What if you fall down? And then what if um, or what if you fall down up here? Alright. And then what if I'm up here? Okay, like ten feet in front of itself. Okay, so Michelle stand up. Okay, we'll come back with a little bit and see how there we go. Okay, so right now, where's the path, everybody? So right from Mia all the way to assets, everyone's within ten feet. What if Michelle falls down? An asset has to return it, right? And make it pop. Okay? So this can change in an instant. And it's, so this is something that we have to just practice and practice and practice with provision cases and understand. Yeah, Violet. Okay, so you need higher packs to create it. Yeah. Where is the original pack? Ooh, yeah. If, what if there's not? Then there's no pack. Yeah. yeah. Here, no pack! So let's do the most extended pack we can. So everybody's ten feet, ten feet, ten feet. A little closer there. Like keep the lines in your gut. Karen, you're ten feet back. No pack! So, 
to think about it, it's our immediate um, reaction is like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. So when I'm blocking, I find I'm, I'm caught because of years of experience doing this. I'm constantly with my blocking buddy. If we're being really successful against the jammer, I'm always like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's catch up, catch up. So if we're being super successful, we just have to keep moving our group forward so that we're not falling out of play. But be aware of our spacing to the group that's in front. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna read exactly what it says. When two groups of blockers exist with more than 10 feet between them, for example, two groups of two, regardless of teams, the rear group is considered out of play and must immediately attempt to regain proximity. The front group remains in play as long as they are not racing away from the rear group. Budget. <laughs> Okay, so let's say like Laura has like legs of steel, backpack is super successful, and the other team's blockers are struggling. Like she's able to push them to the point where they are struggling to show that they're like kind of slowing down to maintain the pack when it gets broken. Oh, it's like because she's just like able to push them. Right. The kind of like shopping cart. Right. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Question. So like when so, when would the front have to disengage? Yeah, like when would the front have to like let go of that yeah. in order to maintain? Is there a scenario in yeah. which they would have to let go of the camera in order to maintain back up? Yeah. Okay. So even if that front jammer is like pushing a shopping cart, like just rip it with him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> very, very fascinating. Okay. <laughs> The jammer can keep fighting and doing their thing. So the jammer is not part of the pack ever. So even if there's no pack, that's a great opportunity for the jammer to piss on out of there. Because usually when the skaters hear the no pack, they kind of go for a second. And if the jammer's like, so oh, true. bye. You know? So yeah, it's an opportunity for sure. And especially at the back, a lot of times the skaters, if they're not so used to this, they'll kind of like, yeah, like do the yield thing or they'll, 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 um, sort of let the jammer go as opposed to keeping the jammer behind them as they move forward. And so, yeah, if the jammers can continue to. Um, so, you always want to talk to them? You need to move forward ahead of the jammer if you're the back group. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for communication is also super important, right? And all awareness, right? You are going to do as a blogger. We know, right, you guys walking, and we know this is about to happen. We know that we're the pack. It's advantageous for us to stay and continue walking. When we do hear that no pack, we know it's their responsibility. What we would not want to do is slip up and start bridging. Because now there is going to be a point for us that says, how do we play, and how do we play the front and head the line? So let's just show that chasing scenario. So stay where you are, Bruzy. And, um, and so Bruzy's like, oh, I'm going to bring it back. And then Laura starts pushing forward on Asset. And Bruzy stays where she is. And then just move forward. And then Asset is trying to get her. Stay in front. Just come back for a second. Sorry, Paul. Stay in front of Asset. Yeah. I'll be the Your buddy. It's a lot to take in. Let's practice. Okay. Yeah. Blue jammer push the black team forward a little bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tiniest. Okay. So we're here. We're behind. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so we're here. You guys are in a fixed in position. We're good. Pack is all. You guys are pushing forward a little bit. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. 